recently picked up a Procunior 1E tapping head. And these are pretty interesting devices. There's a double cone clutch in here such that if this is in the spindle of your mill or your drill press, when you're pressing down, it makes a tap proceed into the work. And when you pull back at twice the rate, it'll, it'll pull the tap back out the other way. And it also works a similar way on CNC's. Now, you can buy these from Tormach um, and other companies. New, they're pretty expensive. They go for like $1,000 or so. I bought this one on eBay for $250 looks to be in really nice condition. It came with this stopping rod which locks into this hole and prevents the entire unit from just spinning while it's in the drill press. And it also came with the collet nut and a single collet and I got lucky and the M4 tap that I'm interested in actually fits in this collet. These collets are about $30 each so getting them with your Procunior is kind of a big deal. I've seen a lot of videos about these and a lot of comments about these on the internet, but weirdly, despite all the information, there isn't a whole lot of information. And One thing that concerns me a little bit is I got this thing and it looks beautiful, but it makes this kind of nasty uh, ratcheting sound. And in the other videos I watched on YouTube, I couldn't hear that same sound. So I'm thinking either there's something wrong with it or maybe it just needs to be lubricated. So that's what I want to do is tear it down, lubricate it, clean it up, put it back together. Procuner publishes a manual which has disassembly instructions and even a complete parts list. So before I go and crack this thing open, um, I wanted to just look at it and see if I could spot anything that was sort of misbehaving. Right in here I can see some galling and if I look closely on the edge here and here there's been a little bit of damage, but it just basically looks like a wrench slipped and left a burr. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take a little file and clean that burr off. And it feels pretty soft, so I might even just take a, this deburring tool and go for it. Okay, so that seems a little better. Um, still grindy, but at least that burr won't be working into this bushing anymore. The four screws at the top labeled in the disassembly manual as H are 532nds. So you just take those out. And then the whole top housing comes off as they call it. So first thing for me to notice is that this part um, is suspended in a ball bearing and it moves smoothly and without any odd sounds. There is the distinct smell of uh, clutch or grease or like heating and it's a little bit oily in here on the inside surfaces, nothing serious. Um, overall looks pretty pretty clean and pretty okay. This gear which meshes with some sort of planetary gears in the bottom is pretty well dry. On the bottom half you can see the cork clutch. Uh, it is actually made of cork and you can see the 1E designation here on the clutch disc and you can also see the planetary gears in the bottom rotating around. And interestingly now after taking it apart if I spin it I don't hear the same grinding noise so we have to assume that that's coming from this interface. Before I opened it I put this sharpie mark on here so that I could orient these back the same as they were and now you can hear that same grinding sound so that has to be this gear interface because now that these are separate it just sounds like something running in a bushing so the manual says a few things about how to clean this thing, and this is pretty clean. I, I'm not real worried about it, but since I'm in here, I might as well uh, clean it. And the first one is to use some alcohol or acetone to clean the clutch, and I have some denatured alcohol. Um, and I'm just going to wipe around the surface of the clutch with it and clean that up. And you can see it comes out pretty 
pretty clean, so this really is a nice, fairly new tapping head. It says to regrease the body bearings and the reverse gear bushings with a Teflon grease, which I have, but without a complete disassembly. Um, taking this whole piece out here, I can't really get at them easily. So what I'm going to do is to get this bushing in good shape, I'm going to put some Teflon grease on this interface and then put this in and out. And I'm using uh, Super Lube, which is a Teflon based synthetic that I really love. I'm just going to put some of that on an acid brush and get it in there. And work that into the bushing. I've got some super lube on this brush and I'm just going to work it into these gear teeth. Okay. Now one of the things that the manual says is that there is felt, and you can see it down at the bottom there, there's like an oil felt uh, way down in here. And they want you to saturate that with oil. I'm just going to pour a little bit into a cap and get it down in there. Trick is not to get it on the clutch, obviously. Alright, I think that's plenty good. Um, we're not trying to drown it, we're just trying to make sure that there is lubrication in there. And uh, let's put it back together, find our marks. There we go. I'm putting these in kind of finger tight and then I'm going to do the bolt pattern tightening like you would do on a wheel. Alright, so let's hear it. Yeah, it actually sounds much happier and less harsh now. So just to show it on video, this is their uh, collet system. This is the 1E collet uh, that goes in here. And it's got a square feature on the back so that if you turn it a certain way, it will lock in and push in all the way. And then you can put your tap in and then you can put your Call it nut on. Now the shank here, I've got a half inch wrench on it. It's a little sloppy, but it seems to be the right size. And then for the front, I sanded down a cheapy crescent wrench because I didn't get the call it tightening tool with this thing on eBay. Uh, but I just made it fit. And I assume like most call you don't want to tighten the shit out of that. Yeah. And there it is. A nice pecunier 1E tapping head.